everyone, we're going to use JASP to run a factorial ANOVA with a non-significant interaction. So from here, let's uh, pull up JASP. And uh, here we have uh, whether sex, male or female, uh, a note-taking method, um, two methods in a control group, and uh, GPA improvement. So we have a first nine week period and a second nine week period. We subtracted the second nine week period, uh, the first nine week period and the second nine week period, and we got the amount of improvement in grade point average. And so, you know, the first thing I want to do is evaluate my normality assumption. I can do that by going to descriptive statistics and uh, looking at GPA improvement and then splitting that by sex. Um, and uh, uh, I have 30 in each group. So I like to look at plots here. Um, and, and look at my QQ plots. So, and we can see they, they stick pretty close to the line. This one's slightly skewed. Um, and uh, I can do the same also um, for, uh, uh, for, for note-taking method. Uh, put that here, look at my GPA improvement. Uh, and again, look at my QQ plots. A um, little skewness here, but pretty close to the line as well. So uh, I'm going to uh, be okay with these and uh, go ahead and run my ANOVA. Um, from here, I click on ANOVA. I put in my dependent variable, and I put in my two independent variables here. Um, I'm going to expand this a little bit so we can see it. Uh, let's check uh, for our uh, homogeneity of assumption. Oh, whoops, hit, hit the wrong one, homogeneity test. There we are, hit for my uh, homogeneity assumption. And uh, uh, we can see that I do meet the homogeneity of variance assumption. Um, and we can also look at my interaction term and we can see that I do not have a statistically significant interaction. F of 254 equals 2.92. P is greater than 0.05. There's no statistically significant interaction. So I can go ahead and interpret the main effects for gender and method. Some things that might be helpful here in doing that. Um, one is uh, I can go and uh, look at uh, my effect sizes and my descriptive statistics for each. So uh, for men, method one mean and method two mean in the control group. Um, and for women, uh, uh, I have uh, each method mean as well. You know, what I don't have is the descriptives just for males and just for females. So I, I, I might wanna get that. And, um, you know, uh, I, I can do that, you know, one, once again, if I've, uh, uh, gone up and uh, uh, looked at um, looked at uh, my descriptives um, up uh, up above. You know, um, I can ask for uh, mean and uh, uh, standard deviation, and so we see that here. Uh, for uh, uh, my descriptive statistics. Uh, and that's for uh, uh, males and females. And then we can also see it for uh, uh, note-taking method. And so I, I have all of that information. Um, I have a non-significant interaction. I have statistical significance for each main effect. So for gender, it's statistically significant between males and females, accounting for 14.2% of the variance in the model. All right, because there's only males and females, I, I know that, you know, looking at my descriptive statistics, males um, have a higher mean than females. And so, uh, you know, th there are my results, you know, and I have my effect size. I can uh, change this to a Cohen's D if I need to. Um, I need to do the same for note taking method. And I do have statistical significance. Um, I don't know where. All I know is that my highest mean for note-taking method 
which is method two, is significantly higher than my lowest mean, but I don't know the relationship between method one and method two and method two and control. So I do want to run a post hoc test, and I can do that for note taking method. And um, uh, when I do that, I can, I can uh, get my effect size as well um, for, the, uh, for those results. And even though I, and so we can see here that method two and method one are statistically significant um, with uh, a pretty large effect size. Uh, there's no uh, difference um, between, no significant difference between method one and control, though the effect size is moderate. And there is a difference uh, between method two and control. We knew that and the effect size is almost, is over one and a half standard deviation units. And while I don't need to run a post hoc for gender because it's only two groups, by doing this in JASP, I do get my Cohen's D right here, which is kind of nice. And so I can say, oh, there was a large effect size between males and females with uh, uh, a mean difference of point, uh, almost 0.19. So uh, that is a factorial ANOVA with a non-significant interaction.